In this video, we're going to look at setting up appearances for a part or assembly in preparation for rendering in SolidWorks. Before we begin, it's important to understand that SolidWorks has three types of rendering visualization modes. These are OpenGL, which is the default renderer that is viewable when you are constructing a part. OpenGL displays color, diffusion, transparency, specularity, and ambient light. Second mode is Real View. Real view gives models a realistic and dynamic representation without the need to render. If your graphics card is real view compatible, real view is enabled by default. Real view will display reflections and bump mapping, whereas OpenGL will not. The third type of model visualization is PhotoView 360. This is a SolidWorks add-in that produces photorealistic renderings of SolidWorks models. PhotoView 360 is only available with SolidWorks Professional or Premium. PhotoView is a ray tracing renderer which supports everything RealView does but adds displacement and transparency with index of refraction capabilities. You'll notice that under the View Settings menu, which is located right here, that you have the ability to turn on and off things like Shadows and Shaded Mode, Perspective, and this thing called Ambient Occlusion. What is ambient occlusion? Well, ambient occlusion is a global lighting method that adds real realism to models by con uh, controlling the attenuation of ambient light due to occluded areas. Think of it as a way to control the quality of shadows on your model. Essentially, with ambient occlusion on, objects appear as they would uh, on an overcast day with more diffused rather than direct light. SolidWorks Professional comes loaded with almost 500 appearances found under the Appearances, Scenes, and Decals toolbar on the right-hand side of the software environment. It's a good idea to familiarize yourself with these appearances as there are a good number of high-quality material representations available. Assigning a material to an object is as simple as dragging and dropping it into place on your model. When you do this, the Appearance Target Palette appears. This toolbar allows you to choose which surface or surfaces to assign this appearance to. In this case, because we only have a sphere, all four uh, of these options here will show the same uh, result in the window. If we had multiple surfaces, you would see different results. There will be times that you need to create custom appearances for your projects. To edit a default appearance on your model, right-click the part of the model that has the appearance assigned to it, go to the Appearances drop-down menu, and choose that state uh, in your part options. On the Property Manager toolbar, you will see options for modifying this material. I recommend that you switch from the default basic view to the advanced view, uh, which includes a better complement of procedural appearance editing tools. To demonstrate the ability of some of these tools, I'm going to create a purple plastic weaved pattern appearance by changing the color and adding a bump map. Let's start by placing a blue medium gloss plastic material onto our surface. Next, let's go over here to the property manager and change the color to a purple. This one right here works pretty well. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the surface finish tab and I'm going to come down here to where it says where I've got a drop down list under the surface finish tab and select from file. Now by default we get this ridiculous SolidWorks thing but uh, if you browse for files you can locate files that you have used in the past or uh, files that you've created yourself uh, stuff you found online etc. So I'm going to use this weaved pattern right here when I initially assign it to my, um, to my object, it comes in looking a little weird and it has these kind of crazy looking uh, edges on them. It looks like they were stitched together. Uh, that has to do with the way that the material was assigned to the object. And that's set up under the Mapping tab. So if you go over here to Mapping, 
you can come down to where the mapping uh, uh, is listed here and it says automatic currently and switch that to cylindrical and then it'll give you something that looks a little better and you can even do things like scale it down uh, so that you get a more intricate pattern and that one looks pretty good there the next thing that I'm gonna do uh, you notice I was adjusting the size of that texture uh, by using this little window here I can also adjust the orientation of it but in this case it doesn't matter because of the shape of the pattern so that one looks pretty good when you're done uh, go ahead and hit the green check mark here and render your scene this is under located under the render tools and choose the final render option and we're not going to set up any settings yet I'm just going to do a quick rendering here when this starts to render out you'll see that it gives you uh, a pretty decent result uh, in fact uh, I'm not going to sit here and wait for it because it takes for forever so here's what it'll end up looking like um, and uh, this is uh, the material we just created with that same color purple applied to it uh, and it's got uh, a bump map on it now you can tell it's a bump map because if you look closely at the edges you notice that there's no variation in the surface it's a it's a complete sphere and it's solid uh, it it's kind of fooling you a little bit because the bump map suggests that there's surface variation here but in reality there's not if you go back to SolidWorks here and uh, like I said let's go ahead and cancel this yes. and uh, we do a final render uh, again but this time oh uh, sorry I forgot to make my change close that down now I'm asking a lot out of my system um, if I go back to my uh, appearance here and under uh, uh, surface finish down at the bottom if I go and click off of bump mapping and instead choose displacement mapping hit the green check mark and render it again exact same scene then what you'll get is this and you'll notice that if you look closely at the edges that it actually has uh, a variation in the size of that surface texture and that's happening because uh, that's the difference between a displacement map and a bump map a bump map is just a, a, a suggestion of the appearance and a displacement map is actually moving the geometry out this is extremely useful uh, for creating complex geometric patterns on parts without wiping out your system resources